So, when you hear the term slug, well, we think of this guy right here. We think of those little, small creatures, the slug. But there's also a locomotive type called the slug. There are four types of these slug locomotives, which, by the way, is completely different from a B unit, which I will eventually do the B units later on. But anyway, what exactly is locomotive slug? Well, don't worry, I'll be here to answer all of your questions. Now, don't think a slug is, like, hard to learn about. Well, there's only four types of it, as I said earlier, but there's not much information to it. These, these are pretty easy to learn, and since there's not very many variants of a slug, this episode might not be as long. But anyway, I am your host, GR Productions, and welcome back to another episode of Trying Terms Talk Show. Anyway, let's begin. So, a railroad slug is an accessory added to a diesel electric locomotive. It has trucks with traction motors, but unlike the B unit, it can't generate any power at all because it lacks a prime mover. Instead, though, the slug is connected to an actual powered locomotive in which they call the mother. And the mother provides the needed electrical power to the slug to operate the traction motors and motor controls. So, what's the purpose of the slug? Well, a slug is used to increase adhesive weight, allowing full power to be applied at a lower speed, thus allowing a higher maximum tractive effort. They are often used in low-speed operations as well, such as switching in yards. At low speeds, a diesel-electric locomotive prime mover is capable of producing more electricity than its traction motors can use effectively. Extra power could cause the wheels to slip and possibly overheat the traction motors, which is bad. A slug increases the number of traction motors available to the locomotive increasing both the pulling and braking power. In addition, the load on each traction motor is also reduced, which helps prevent overheating from excess current. Slugs typically carry ballast to increase their weight and improve traction. Large blocks of concrete are frequently used for this purpose, substituting for the weight of the now absent prime power. Slugs can be built new or converted from existing locomotives. Like, for example, take a look at C&O 3522, an EMD GP35, and here's what it looks like today as rebuilt in slug. It now wears the CSX YN3 livery and mostly stays and works around the yards. Alright, so now that you know, like, the basic principles of a slug and, like, why they are useful to the railroad, let's go ahead and take a look at the four variants of the slugs. Not very many details, super easy to learn. So anyway, let's begin. Here is our first kind of slug unit. This is called just a regular yard slug. I know, it looks very, very weird. It's very small has a very low body, but it, but it is allowing the engineer or driver in the powered unit to see past it. Mother slug sets are used in heavy switching, switching hump yard switching, and transfer runs between yards. Some, some are radio controlled without an engineer cab, which like this other unit here, it's just mainly designed for switching. And it also and it also increases visibility in low-speed operation. And now here's this slug. I know it looks like a yard slug, but just with four axles. But however, though, it is different. The physical difference, I mean, there's just hardly any difference on the outside. We call this a hump slug. And a hump slug, slug is designed for even slower operation than a yard slug. They are often six-axle slugs, 
and are often paired with low or powered six axle locomotives. They are designed for the specialized purpose of pushing a long cut of cars over a hump at two to three miles per hour, while yard slugs, you know, just normally operate at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Okay, now here is a picture of a road slug. It's much bigger than the yard slug and the hump slug. Well, these slugs are, are intended to serve as a part of a regular locomotive consist for road haulage. As a result, and as a result, have certain adaptations to suit them for the service. They usually retain dynamic brakes, a feature useless at the low speeds encountered in switching service, and they may be equipped to serve as fuel tenders for the attached mother locomotives. In operation, they are used to provide extra traction at low speeds. As speed increases, they are disconnected from the power circuit and function as a control cab, but that is if they only are in the lead, or simply as an unpowered car in the consist. In braking, they, they augment the powered locomotives, both during dynamic and air brake application. Road slugs may also take several forms, like for example, a group of GP30 and GP35 Locomotives were converted by CSX and operated as half of mother slug pairs. Externally, they retain the general appearance of power diesel electric locomotives, though they can be identified by the lack of radiators and the removal of access doors on the side of the body. They retain the cab and its controls, and therefore multiple unit control allows them to function as the lead in a string of units. And now, here is another kind of slug here. It looks exactly like a road slug, but it is actually different. Like, the, the design of it is different, not on the outside, but on the inside. What we call this unit is a road mate. So, and MATE stands for Motors for Added Tractive Effort. That's what it stands for. And, and that's one of the terminologies and used by GE. Santa Fe likes to call them drones. RDMT is used by CSX. RD MATE is used by EMD. TEBU, Tractive Effort Booster Unit, used by Morrison... Nudson and Southern Pacific, TEBC, Tractive Effort Booster Cab, used by BN and BNSF Cab Slugs, and then TEBCU, Tractive Effort Booster Cab Unit, used by BN and BNSF as well, and then Hump Booster, used by Canadian National. Anyway, what is a road mate? And what is different about it? Well, mates appear similar to slugs, but their design is different, as I've said. Instead of siphoning off power as a slug does, the axles in a mate are fully connected into the transition series in the locomotive it is connected to the mother. A double-ended mate, a mate with connections on both ends, Turns to turns two four axle locomotives into the equivalent of two fully fledged six axle locomotives. A single ended mate turns a four axle locomotive into the equivalent of an eight axle locomotive. Mates do not cut out at speed as the motors are fully included in the series parallel transition stages. Alright guys, so that is it for today's episode of Train Terms Talk Show on Railroad Slugs. They are pretty cool and very useful to the railroads as well. Well, I hope you enjoyed this 25th episode of Train Terms Talk Show. I'm sorry it's been a while that I've made one. It's been probably a month or two now since I've made one. Well, I, I kind of had to take a little break. Plus right now I am running... I'm running pretty dang behind on videos. I still got a lot more to upload. That's why I've been doing daily and consecutive uploads. 
because I am way behind. But, however, though, I should be getting back to making Train Terms talk show episodes any minute. This could be it for a little longer, but who knows? I, I, could, I could work something out. But anyway, thank you all guys so much for watching. Consider subscribing to the channel and help me reach 300. I am only 5 away from reaching 300, so please, if you can, get me the 300 subs. Anyway, that's all I have to say today. GR Productions is out.